Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hi, hi everyone, we are going to start the next session. Now the second case, what is the second case? Second case is that effect of increase in Z. So when we have, when we have increase in Z, so this leads to what we have the, the uh, uh, so here when we are talking about effects of increase in Z, so here we are talking about productivity. So how productivity increases, decreases, so here we have when we go for increasing the Z, which means that the factor productivity is increasing. So better technology, maybe a good weather, better working conditions. So these things are part of the productivity factor. So these things lead to increase, uh, these things lead to increase in the better productivity of the, uh, the representative consumer. So if you are an even for the firm, because representative consumer will have better working conditions, better standard of living. So in this situation, what will be the immediate output? So immediate output would be that the representative consumer was earlier here at F point, but now the representative consumer is moving uh, uh, because of this productivity shock, the positive productivity shock, this consumer is moving to I2, now he is at point H. Now at H point you can see that the from consumption side, the, the consumer is playing very important role. So here we have C1 and C2, but here when, when I say C1 and C2, so here you have to understand that we are talking about the increase in consumption of the representative consumer. So representative consumer is going to have a good time, but leisure remains same, which means that from when we have increase in productivity, it is sure that the labor is going to have good time, uh, it will have the better consumption possibilities, this is how it is looking like. But from leisure side it is unclear that whether the leisure will increase or decrease. So this is one of the important understandings and this is what we always mention and uh, the, the, this is the production function and this is the, the, the Z2 FK H minus L minus G is what this line represents, the PPF that we are mentioning. So unlike the government expenditure increase, here it is more or less clear that here we are talking about the increase in productivity and this increase in productivity is translating into increase in consumption, but it is up to the representative agent to decide about. It may happen that because of this increase income, which means that now the individuals are going to be asking for more. So here the condition more or less remains same. that. In this situation, C is increasing, L may increase or decrease, Y increases and W increases. Why W increases? Because then the uh, once you have the, uh, the better conditions, which means that the marginal product of labor is going to be higher. So once we have marginal product of labor uh, going to be higher than the wage rate, then of course the uh, there will be a uh, some kind of demand from the labor side also. So this will lead to increase in wage rate, better the consumption possibilities of the preventive consumers, but it depends upon the reactions of the preventive consumers. It may happen that representative consumer may would like to, uh, to go for uh, some amount of, I would say uh, so some amount of uh, maybe they would not like to work for the same number of hours they used to work. They may be supplying a limited number of hours, but it, it all depends upon the representative consumer's decision that how representative consumers are going to be deciding about. So this is one aspect that you have. So the, the, this is how it looks like that when you have, so in case of income and substitution effect, if you just try to understand, so here it works. So here you have the, the B point that, that you have and uh, once we have the, the the, the point, so here we draw a parallel line to the just to, just to drive the income and substitution effect. So here we draw the parallel line 
and here also a parallel line to this because the representative agent has moved from A to B. So, just to drive the substitution effect which is from A to D and D to B is the income effect. So, here what we are trying to see is that the, the new production possibility that we have which has the same slope as this one, it is again going in favor of the consumption. So, from consumption point of view when substitution effect is taking place from consumption, consumption point of view it is clear that compared to original C1 this representative consumer is going to have this much of consumption, but leisure is decreasing which means that now the this particular representative agent will have to work, he would like to work for more number of hours. So, that is a quite possibility, but if you just take into account D to B which is the income effect, if you just take into account the income effect then this representative agent is not going to increase any number of hours he would like to go for the same. So, income effect is having a clear cut idea that it is having uh, a positive effect on consumption, leisure it is having no effect, but substitution effect is having both. So, if the, if the representative agent wants to work for more number of hours, he would like to get more income. So, that is quite a possibility, but from income effect side it is not very clear what to do. So, this is how we have now, we will be uh, summarizing the thing that we have done so far. So, here we will be talking mostly in terms of how we are going to deal with. So, we have examined this part and in case uh, you, you, we want to see that how a particular representative agent is going to talk about. So, this will be equivalent to both. So, here we are talking about the, the, the possibilities of the representative consumer. So, representative consumer suppose we have the example. So, whatever we have derived so far we can go for uh, go for thinking about how we can understand with this help of certain examples. So, some examples I have given. So, let us uh, examine one by one. So, here we have suppose we have a representative consumer which has the well defined preference of labor and leisure with utility function of UCL where C and, and L denoted as consumption and leisure respectively. There is also a representative form which is having the production function y is equal to zf k and d. The form has the profit maximization function which is pi is equal to y minus w n. So, if you think about the production function, so production function it is same y is equal to zf k and d. Now, the profit maximization objective of the, uh, the representative firm is y minus w n. Both consumer and firms are non priced, uh, both, both and consumers and firms are the non price makers which means that they are price takers. The economy is a closed economy and has a well functioning government which has, uh, which charges the lump sum tax from the representative consumer and looks after the well-being of the repair. Now, given this statement that we have, so we have defined the utility function, we have the forms which is having the production function, which is having the profit uh, maximization function also. So, given this statement, can we find the optimization condition for the representative consumer and forms? If we can do that, so can we write it there? So, here we have max C L is equal to U C L subject to C is equal to W H minus L plus pi minus t. So, the, this is what we have defined the Bayard constraint of the representative agent. So, Bayard constraint is that this particular guy is, is getting the, the wage rate w. So, here we have mentioned about uh, that for la labor and leisure. So, this consumption and leisure that framework we have. So, this w n that we have it is coming for the the labor and then here you have the pi which is the profit, but it is also being distributed to the representative agent. So, this will go. So, here we have the since you have uh, h is equal to l plus n. So, here n can be written as h minus l. So, pi minus t this is the tax that the representative consumer is getting. Then here we have the Langridge multiplier problem. So, we set up a Langridge multiplier which is nothing but u is equal to c l plus lambda w into h minus l plus pi minus t minus c. So, this is what we 
try you if you want you can also use the method of substitution and you can substitute here instead of this you can just put it up here. But if you are going to use the Lagrange multiplier which is a dynamic optimization uh, problem. So, here if you just go for a first order condition with respect to C and L. So, here we have del L upon del C is equal to here you have the first order condition of this minus here it is lambda because this becomes your your uh, it becomes minus 1. So, here you have minus lambda is equal to 0. Here we have del L upon del L upon del L which means that it is a leisure. So, it also has the first order condition with respect to del L. Uh, then here you have the minus here you have the del L which means that if, if W goes inside then it will, it will be minus lambda W is equal to 0. If you go by del L upon del lambda then this is how it becomes W into H minus L plus pi minus T minus C is equal to 0. So, this is what we get it right. So, here it is L is equal to U C L plus lambda W H minus L plus pi minus T minus C. So, here it is del L upon del C. So, first order condition is this. So, for first order condition normally gets is this. Now, once I go for further class, so if you go for solving of this which is nothing but the, the first order condition of leisure upon the first order condition of consumption the C L L. So, we if you just solve for lambda and then if you just try to substitute then you are having at this particular solution. So, which is having uh, u transpose L C L upon u transpose C C L is equal to W which is also the the uh, the, uh, the condition for the marginal rate of substitution. So, marginal rate of substitution is nothing but the same that we got that it is with regard to the wage rate. Now, we will be so from this particular analysis we are able to derive the marginal rate of substitution MRS MRS C L or MRS L C is equal to W. So, which is the slope which means that the slope of the indifference curve is just the W that we take it. Now, we are going to talk about the representative form. So, representative form is equal to y is equal to z f k n d. So, profit is equal to pi y minus w n. So, here it is max n d. So, we are talking about z f k n d minus w n d. So, here it is the first order condition. So, here it is d max upon d n d is equal to the the first order condition of this particular function. So, here we have the since it is production function. So, we know that it becomes uh, once we want to drive the marginal productivity. So, we are differentiating with respect to N D. So, this will become the marginal product of labor. So, once we have Z F trans uh, N K N D. So, this will also be equivalent to W here. So, the, this is what we get which means that here it says that the marginal productivity of labor is equal to W. So, this also satisfies the conditions of the, the form which, which means that it, it also satisfied and fulfills the, the conditions of form and which also says that here it is talking about the form that uh, this equilibrium will decide about how much labor has to be supplied and how much demand will be coming from the firm. So, both will be interacting with only one variable as an uh, as an important variable equilibrium which is the wage rate. So, here also the wage rate is playing important role and here also we are finding that it is playing important role. Now, we are going to see the competitive equilibrium part. So, in competitive equilibrium the representative consumer and firm fulfill their objectives and maximizing utility and profit. The bias constraint of the government hold and labor market clears. So, here what we try to do is that we combine two equations from the uh, consumer optimization problem. So, here it is W is equal to H minus L plus pi minus T minus C. So, here what is the H minus L? So, here we are talking about H minus L is equal to here we have the same budget constraint that we are talking. So, here we have the condition of the marginal rate of marginal rate of substitution and then here we are also superimposing the optimization condition of the form which is the marginal product of labor is, 
is equal to wage rate. Now, if we substitute this with the profit function of the firm, so here the, this is how it looks like. So, if you are substituting this for profit function of the firm, so here we are having the similar scenarios. So, here the optimization representative and profit function is this. Now, if you introduce the budget constraint, so budget constraint will be what? Budget constraint will be government expenditure is equal to the tax rate and the market clearing condition will be what? Market clearing conditions will be H minus L is equal to ND. So, H minus L is equal to ND means that how much he is supplying for labor. Now, after solving, once we are trying to solve for the competitive equilibrium, so there it becomes really important. In case of competitive equilibrium, the role of the representative agents becomes important. So, here it is equal to W H minus L plus pi minus T minus C is equal to 0 and then here we, we substitute. So, here once we go for substitution, so here it, it becomes easier to solve. So, here W N D that we get it here and then here we have for pi. So, for pi we are introducing this particular expression. So, for pi we have introduced this. So, we are introducing here the same minus g minus c and we can write the expression of this as this because this gets cancelled right. So, what we are having is nothing but c is equal to z of k and d minus g and if you just try to work it out which is equal to y is equal to c plus g. So, this becomes c is equal to y minus g and g is and y is equal to it becomes c plus g. So, this is the basic equation that we always mention. So, we can write this particular expression. Now, from here we can again go for uh, since equation 14 is the expression for C. So, to find the expression of L because we are transforming that. So, we are now looking for the, uh, we are changing the consumer optimization. So, here equation 14 it becomes like this, this particular expression that we have. So, here we are trying to showcase it here. So, here what we are seeing in case of 14 here it is the uh, first order, uh, the, the first derivatives of mu transpose L C L minus W the first order derivative of the consumption C L. Here we are having the, the similar condition. So, here we are also doing the in the similar way. So, here it becomes U transpose C L Z F K N D then here it becomes with respect to C L. So, this becomes the product. So, here it is equal to 0. If you go for solution what you are getting is nothing but this particular expression. So, if you have a, if you are just going for this with respect to L, so here you have a particular condition like this. So, if you have U transpose L C L and you, here you have the U transpose C C L. So, if it is coming, if you just solve for Z F K Z F transpose N K H minus L. Uh, so, here it becomes the the marginal rate of substitution. So, here you have the uh, u utility of leisure, the first order condition of the utility with respect to leisure and then here it becomes the first order condition of the leisure uh, of consumption. Uh, so, here if you just try to see here it is the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the marginal product of labor that we have. So, Z F transpose N K H minus L and then here we are trying to get the same expression that we had is equal to W. So, here it becomes important. So, in 14 this, this is what we try to understand. So, if we bring this this side, so here it becomes the marginal rate of substitution. So, here we try to achieve by the same objective. So, finally, what we are getting is that the marginal rate of substitution which is represented by the ratio of the, uh, the equivalent to the marginal product of labor and here we have W. So, here we are talking about the competitive equilibrium. So, in competitive equilibrium what is the hypothesis that we have the assumption that in competitive equilibrium the representative consumer and firm fulfills their objectives. So, consumer, op uh, consumer objective is that this particular representative consumer would like to maximize his uh, consumption with the number of hours supplied to the market. Firm's objective is to maximize the profit with the given 
the wage rate that it pays to the uh, to the representative agent. So here, the government, the budget constraint it holds. So in order to understand, uh, we combine the two equations of the consumer problem. So here we have W H minus L plus pi minus T minus C. So this represents all. So here we have W H L coming from the labor side. Then here we have the pi coming from the firm side. Then here we have the T which is coming from the government side. So all are satisfied. And then here we uh, go for the first order condition of the uh, with respect to labor and leisure that we have done uh, previously. So there we have the marginal rate of substitution which is represented for le leisure and consumption. It is denoted at W or you can also write this as equal to 0. Right? The optimization by the representative form can be done here. So, here we have Z first order condition for the form. So, here is nothing. So, this particular part is nothing but the marginal product of labor is equal to wage rate. Now, if you go by defining in this particular part pi, so pi the profit is represented by Z F K N D minus W N D. So, here it is, right. Now, the optimization by a firm if you try and understand then here it it makes uh, so here here it makes easier to uh, to understand that here we are trying to optimize the representative form and representative form is how much the marginal product so we have done already this part the profit we have done already government g is equal to t so when i am writing t here this is equivalent to g is equal to t the market clearing condition is what how many number of hours the labor works and what is the labor supply. So, so here it is coming from the, the so th this one is maybe from the labor side, this one is from the firm side. So, labor market clears here. Now, for competitive equilibrium, in our setup we have only two exogenous variables that we have already mentioned. First is the productivity and second is the government expenditure. Now, to make it more easy, so here we can write this particular part and if you just try to solve the budget constraint what we get is nothing but C is equal to Z F K N D because this gets cancelled because demand and supply are equal. So this gets cancelled here we have Z F K N D minus Z minus C which can be written as C is equal to Z F K N D minus Z. Now we can also write this expression as. Now, Equation 14 is the expression for C, this, this, this is what we mentioned. So, if you try and substitute it here and, and to find the expression of L, we can transform the consumer, con, consumer's optimization problem. Equation 14 is this. So, this will be looking like this if you are trying to superimpose this condition here. So, if you are tra trying to superimpose this condition, then what we get after this solution is the condition of marginal rate of substitution C L is equal to marginal product of labor is equal to wage rate. So, this will be the obvious. In case of competitive equilibrium, this is what we have the competitive equilibrium where we are talking about C is equal to Z F K N D minus G, C is equal to Y minus G and Y is equal to C plus G. So, finally, we are arriving at the, the condition that we had earlier. So, instead of if going by the marginal condition, the competitive equilibrium, it can be by this or it can be by this that we have done earlier. Now, let us talk about the Pareto optimal condition. So, Pareto optimality condition as we have assumed for the, the Pareto uh, optimality condition. So, here we have to see that whatever competitive equilibrium that we have achieved, whether it is socially optimal or not. So, we will now here, we will stop here and we will try to see that how in the ne next session the whether the competitive equilibrium that we have defined whether it is parameter optimal or not or whether it is economically efficient or not. So, for that reason we will have to superimpose certain conditions and then we have to see that the whether we get the same marginal rate of substitution is equal to marginal product or marginal rate of technical uh, marginal rate of transformation is equal to wage rate. So, that condition we have to fulfill it again, but as of now let me summarize what we have done. So, we first defined the competitive equilibrium, we worked with the competitive statics, 
we were more confident about government consumption, uh, government expenditure leading to increase in consumption, but it did not work, it led to decrease in consumption, wage did also fall. So, these two variables act as a counter cyclical, but in case of productivity you have consumption increasing because there you have the direct role of the income effect and the, that shows the, the lot of uh, dynamics involved and substitution effect is also having the reinforcing effect on the consumption, so it was clear. Then we worked with the optimization condition and we tried to satisfy the marginal conditions of the competitive equilibrium and we did that. Now in the next exercise we will be doing about the Pareto optimality condition. Thank you, thank you so much.